We hope you're having a great week out there and thank you for tuning in to Retiring Well. We're gonna dive right in this week with why the last few years leading up to retirement are so important for your planning. You've worked 20, 30, 40, maybe even 50 years and now these last couple years right on the home trip are so vitally important. Watch us walk through that with you. Then, how to turn $1 million into passive retirement income. In retirement, that income is that's your lifestyle that allows you to do all those things you wanna do and how are some various ways you can set up your retirement savings to produce that income for you. Then, Jack is gonna talk about how to calculate your social security break even point. What is that and why is that so important? And finally, to wrap up the show, we're gonna talk about health savings account, HSAs, and what they are, what are some of the benefits, maybe why you should consider that as part of your retirement plan and savings plan and beyond. All of this and so much more additional information coming up to you right here on Retiring Well. Retiring Well. Brought to you by Centennial Wealth Advisory, financial advisors specializing in retirement planning and serving all of Northern Michigan. Retiring well, helping you plan for a successful and comfortable retirement. Retiring well, plan to retire well. Retirement can seem like a daunting task, but it's so vital to be planning in advance for that. And especially those last five years before retirement are so important. So let's walk through uh, some different ideas to be taken into consideration for, uh, for those last five years before retirement. First, the idea of this compound interest. So you wanna be making money on your money. And, and those last five years are so vital because your assets are likely at the highest that they've ever been over your lifetime and you're potentially maxing out your retirement contribution. So not only do you have the most money that you've ever had in there, you're also putting the most money in and hoping that obviously you get some growth on that and really boosting up your, your retirement savings as you lead into retirement. Another factor here uh, to max out those retirement contributions is the kids are likely out of the home at this point. Uh, maybe college expenses are behind you. And so that helps again with that cash flow perspective. Number two is starting to understand your, your expenses for retirement. You know, you're maybe walking through the idea, if you're married, you're talking to your spouse about, okay, what sort of travel do we wanna do in retirement? What, what are those leisurely activities that we're gonna be potentially spending money on? Uh, what, what's the lifestyle look like? As again, hopefully if you, if you have a family, children are out of the house and all that, uh, I best heard it said by one of our clients that, oh, my child's now off of the payroll. So the, the, the kids are off the payroll as, as uh, they put it. And so now you know maybe a little better what your expenses look like. And, and in just simple comparison, you know uh, what those are in comparison to when you were maybe 40 years old and had a lot going on with, with the family. Number three, paying for bigger expenses up front. So if you know, well, we've got to replace the roof here pretty soon, that might be something to take care of while you're still working. Or if it's, oh, I want to buy a new car or you know, have fun with different toys, it's a boat or a side-by-side -side or whatever it might be, if you could pay for that prior to retirement through your, your regular income, all the better going into retirement. There's a, number four, an opportunity uh, to care, take care of some, maybe some medical care while you're under your employer's health insurance. Uh, you know that uh, medical expenses can be sort of unforeseen, but maybe there's certain procedures that you've put off. You know, maybe it's the, the knee replacement, the hip replacement, whatever it might be uh, that you've been postponing, but it might be that time to do that while your medical costs are primarily covered through your employer. Lastly, take that opportunity to, uh, to start dreaming. Uh, create maybe a bucket list of things that you want to do and with that, uh, factor in what those costs might be. Uh, if you have a financial advisor that you're working alongside, a lot of times I know here at our office we can map out like a long-term uh, plan as far as what those expenses might be. So if you know, well, okay, in, 
couple years into retirement, we know that we're going to be uh, going on this big expensive family vacation. And so you want to factor that into the overall retirement plan. Or if you're the type that says, well, we know that we'll want to uh, buy a new vehicle periodically, uh, then map that out again. And, and that's where it's so beneficial to try and get an idea of what your retirement will look like if you've at least put those, those potential expenses into the overall plan. We encourage you to be intentional with your retirement. Maybe have those different activities. What are you going to do once you get to retirement? What are, are there different volunteer opportunities that you feel that uh, you've always wanted to do, but the, the time factor uh, has, hasn't been there for you? Well, in retirement, that's hopefully uh, what that opens, opens up a lot more time. Is it spending more time with, uh, at that point, do you have grandchildren? I know that's pretty popular amongst our clients is spending that, that extra time with the grandchildren children and in certain cases heavily taking care of the grandkids while maybe your children are at work and and what joy that might bring you uh, and and you're helping out your family retirement's an emotional transition uh, and and it's preparing yourself for that but also to look forward to this time uh, as you're building your plan and getting closer to retirement, if you have specific questions that here at Centennial Wealth we can help you out with, we welcome you to give us a call. Make the most of Social Security. Although Social Security isn't designed to cover all of your income needs, it's an important part of the retirement puzzle. Download our free booklet on the Social Security decisions at sin-wealth.com and learn how to optimize Social Security for your situation. Why timing is so important when it comes to your benefits. Ways to supplement your Social Security and more. There is no cost and no obligation. Simply go to sin-wealth.com, scroll down and click the download link to get your free booklet on the Social Security Decisions. It's your retirement. How will you live it? How will you be remembered? Will you be able to take me on vacation? Will you be there for my ball game? Will you teach me your values? Will you be able to play with me? Oh, help me go to college. How will I remember you? Have the retirement you dream about. Contact us today. At Centennial Wealth Advisory, we specialize in retirement planning, serving all of Northern Michigan with offices in Traverse City, Gaylord, Petoskey, and Cadillac. We implement a holistic approach that focuses on preservation of wealth and income and includes investment planning, income planning, tax planning, healthcare planning, estate planning, and the best combination of all interconnected components affecting each other. Planning is the first step to succeeding. Plan to retire well. Let's take a scenario here and talk about retirement income. How to turn $1 million into passive retirement income. A little tip here, if you don't have a million, you have more, you have less, insert the dollar amount there. But we're gonna talk about six different options that you can consider to have this passive retirement income. First, what is passive? Effectively passive, in very simplistic terms, it, you don't have to work. Right, That money is coming out and you're not physically doing labor, employment, stuff like that. It's, it's passively happening. Option one, buy an annuity. So many different types of annuities out there. In our opinion, some good, some not so great. But again, typically owned through an insurance company, you're purchasing some form of annuity that's spinning off some passive income stream to you over your lifetime, maybe it's jointly over you and your spouses, or over a period certain time. Again, before purchasing an annuity, look at all the different options, the fees, expenses. Again, they're typically insurance products. You have to work with a licensed insurance agent to do that. So again, potentially may be appropriate for you. For others, maybe not so much. Again, it's an option that exists out there. Option number two, purchase dividend-paying stocks. So again, some stocks that are out there equities, they spit off either quarterly, monthly dividends 
to you as the owner of that stock as a typically a percentage of what you have. So stocks like let's say AT&T or Verizon, Ford, there's hundreds and maybe if not thousands of different stocks out there that pay some sort of dividend. Some percentage is a little bit higher, some a little bit lower, and oftentimes they change a little bit. And again, so again, the good is they're spitting off this this um, dividend, generally the money is liquid because you can buy and sell stocks at the market value when the markets are open. But the concern in this circumstances is risk. You still own equities, so you're gonna have some, your balances are gonna fluctuate. And oftentimes your dividends will fluctuate too during that time. So again, it's an option that exists, may or may not be appropriate for you buying fixed income types products. So think like bonds, either municipal bonds, government treasuries, corporate bonds, stuff like that. They're gonna have like a stated coupon rate or some form of interest rate that they're gonna pay you. Again, you're holding this investment vehicle with the idea that it's producing an income stream to you on an ongoing basis. Advantage here is you have, an, a, most of the time, you have a stated stream of income for a stated period of time, so a little bit more predictability in some cases. Challenge if you're holding the physical bond, sometimes there's liquidity restrictions, and you're still gonna have some risk associated with this. If the underlying um, government or underlying corporation or municipality was to have financial troubles and go um, belly up or bankrupt, obviously your investment would be in jeopardy at that time. So again, may or may not be appropriate for you. Option four, starting a business. So again, I said passive earlier, right? And you might be thinking, whoa, I'm retired here. Why am I starting a business? Sometimes there's businesses out there that you can be partnerships in, or you can start that it's kind of that passive role, right? You're maybe the, the money person or the investor of that, and it's gonna spit off some form of K-1 income or something along the lines of that. Again, again not for everybody, but potentially an option. Advantage, maybe great growth potential. Disadvantage, businesses have risk, right? Business owners, there's no guarantee when it comes to that. If you're, the business that you're in doesn't do well or it's maybe cyclical, stuff like that, obviously some challenges with that. Investing in real estate is another option. So a lot of people think of like most, or, most people think when it comes to this is like rental properties. So you buy a house for a price, you rent that house out for either short-term or long-term nature, and you collect a rent check from your tenants. So passively invest in that. Again, advantage, real estate may appreciate in value. You have renters in there, it's gonna kick that out. Disadvantage, you potentially could have a renter that's not pay, that can damage your property. Property values can go down. Again, advantages and disadvantages to everything. It depends on your situation. And the final one out there, kind of as a combination, is building a portfolio. Maybe you have a little bit of each of these different things that we've talked about here today in that portfolio so that way you're diversified across the nature. Again, when you start looking at taking a sum of money and investing it to generate income, it's important that it not only matches your income goals, but matches your risk and tolerance and accessibility that you're after. Give us a call, we'd love to sit down with you and help you build that dream retirement so you can plan to retire well. There's a retirement crisis because many people aren't well-informed and well-prepared. Information and proper planning are key for the success for your retirement. You need to be cognitive of your particular situation and how you can best plan to retire well. Our team has prepared several videos that are based on whether you're single, married, retired, still working, and there's no cost, no obligation to access these customized videos. You can visit send-wealth.com to access the videos. Our goal is to inform and to educate. Our hope is to provide you with tools that help you plan to retire well. We hope you will find the content valuable and pose some questions you may not have considered, including income. There's a variety of ways to structure an income plan, but it depends on your goals. Investments, be aware of the risk. You need to consider your capacity for risk attitude and need to take risk. Taxes, you can't solely rely on your tax preparer. Retirement tax planning is a whole other animal. Estate, you don't need to be afraid of preparing for the inevitable. 
Insurance. We believe health insurance is more important to your retirement plan than ever before. If you have additional questions or are interested in a personal meeting, the initial consultation is complimentary. We can assure you we'll never pressure anyone to become a client. We encourage you to visit send-wealth.com to access these videos. Our hope is that you take advantage of this opportunity to further your knowledge and improve your confidence in your existing retirement plan or help you along that path. Again, we encourage you to go out there, take advantage of this opportunity, as our goal is to help you plan to retire well. Living life isn't always easy. It puts up challenges and obstacles you'll have to overcome. There are responsibilities. You put in effort to provide and take care of your family, and to save and invest to balance work and life. Planning is the first step to succeeding. Plan to retire well. Your grandchildren are precious to you. They are your life. This is your time to have that special relationship. Taking care of yourself is taking care of them. Centennial Wealth Advisory is offering a free, no obligation retirement review to make sure you don't run out of money during your retirement. Centennial Wealth Advisory, your best is yet to come. Are you paying more than you should? When we help with retirement planning, part of the process includes implementing tax reduction strategies to help limit your liability increase your cash flow, and preserve your principal. Our tax planning team has the required licensing and is well-versed and up-to-date in the ever-evolving tax landscape. Don't pay more than you should, and planning is the first step to succeeding. Plan to retire well. Hey, welcome to this segment on how to calculate your Social Security break-even age. And so before we even get started, I'm going to have a little spoiler alert. Pretty much when we do these calculations, it's always around age 80 to 81 to age 82. That's, that's that range of age where the break-even point comes out from cumulative benefits. And we're going to have plenty of time to dive into the details here in that segment so that you can better understand that. But that's um, whereas I prepare you for, okay, so basically, if 81 is our break-even point, what it means is if you start earlier, you're likely going to have more money, you know, cumulatively before age 81. And if you live past age 81, you'll have more money accumulated. And so let's get into the five things that we want to consider when we talk about Social Security. First thing is just understanding Social Security benefits. So you have to have at least worked for 10 years, uh, paid in Social Security taxes, that makes you eligible. And then what they're gonna do is they're gonna take the average, highest average of the 35 working years. And so if you're working and you're thinking about retiring but you're making really good money, and uh, you might wanna look at what your work history is because if there's a year where you didn't make as much money, your latest money that you're making right now might kick off that bad year and then your average is higher and your Social Security benefit will be higher. You can start at age 62 and you can defer all the way to age 70. The second thing is just, just talk about calculating your break-even point for Social Security. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say that for this example, there's no COLA, okay, because that'll just make the calculations a little bit more complicated. They will make them a little bit more accurate, but we want to get big picture here, okay? So we're not going to have COLA, and obviously this is not an individualized result. So there'll be some resources in a minute I'll show you um, as to how you can make it personalized. So we're going to start with a full retirement age of 67 for this example, and they have uh, $2,000 is what their FRA number is, okay? So if we back it up to age 62, that means that from 62 to full retirement age, those five years, you gain about 6% a year um, with your Social Security. So we have to back out 6%. So we start at 2,000, we back out 6% a year, 30%. That means that we're gonna get about 70% of our FRA amount, which happens to be about $1,400 a month. That's about $16,800 a year. Now, if we made $16,800 a year for about 20 years, we'd have a total of $336,000. 
Okay, let's go to say if we started at age 67. That's our $2,000 a month, $24,000 a year. We do that for about 14 years. That means that we'll get our 336,000 of cumulative benefits and that break even point is about age 81. So 14 years plus 67 when we started. Now the last one is, let's say we waited till we were 70. We're gonna get from a full retirement age to age 70, your social security goes up about 8% a year. So now your $2,000 benefit at 67 potentially could become $2,480 a month. That comes out to be just shy of $30,000 a year. It's $29,760. So if you're making that starting at age 70 for the next 11 years roughly, you'll get to that $336,000 cumulative benefit. That would put you at about age 81. So it's 81, 82, but these get very individualized and there's some really cool things. Um, so let's just back up a second, talk about the third thing. What's the impact of delaying Social Security? Well, you can see from that chart, the more you delay, the bigger your contractual monthly income amount is. And so by delaying, you're gonna be getting paid more monthly. But also by delaying, you're losing that money that you would have gotten by starting earlier. So if you start early, the slope's gonna be like this. And the later that you start, the steeper the slope gets. And eventually those two will break even. And then you'll know, you know at least what that age is. Um, the next thing is to utilize these online calculators. If you go to ssa.gov forward slash benefits forward slash calculators, it'll allow you to better individualize your break even point. And then number five, when is the right time to decide on when to take Social Security? You'd want to look at three things. The first thing is, how, unfortunately, how long are you going to live? If you know when you're going to pass away, we can tell you exactly when you should start Social Security. A little tongue in cheek there because the reality is you don't really know what your best option was until you look backwards and play Monday morning quarterback. But if you look at your family history, you look at your uh, medical situation right now, that might help you better influence when you should start Social Security. Feel like you're going to live a really long time, then maybe you want to wait. Feel like it's not really in the cards for you, you might want to start early. Second thing is spousal benefits. Sometimes you want to plan for that spouse and that might be a reason to delay. And then finally, um, are you going to continue to work? Because if you're going to work before your full retirement age, there are restrictions on how much you can make. So I hope you found that helpful. If you ever need any help uh, and want to sit down with us, please feel free to give us a call or check us out on the web. Have a great day. When you have confidence in your retirement future, you can live the life you've always imagined. Because of planning, you now have time to reflect on the wonderful memories of your life. You and your spouse finally have the luxury of leisure time together. Spend fun times with your grandkids, sharing the joy of their excitement about life. Smiling at the thought of quality time with your children and of picking up the check. last you have time to breathe and rekindle the love of your life why because you imagined what could be you planned for retirement so today you own your future If you're about five to 10 years from retirement, now is the time to start planning. Review your financial situation, what source of income you'll be able to draw from, 
What are your expected expenses? Take advantage of creative ways to maximize your retirement savings. Explore your social security options. Get with a financial mentor. That's a tenure wealth advisory. We specialize in retirement planning. Planning is the first step to succeeding in retirement. Plan to retire well. Health savings accounts, also known as HSAs. Um, they're probably one of my more favorite investment accounts that are out there, um, primarily for the tax benefits. But what are HSAs? Well, they're a, a tax efficient way for you to save for future health issues that might arise. Reason I say they're my favorite is because it's one of the only accounts that has that triple tax benefit. So you put money into them, you get that tax deduction, the funds then grow tax free in the market or however you invest them. And then when you take Take the money out as long as you use the money for qualified medical expenses, you get a tax break from that as well. You get to take them out tax free. So it's an awesome account. However, there are a bunch, of, a bunch of rules associated with those HSAs, so you want to make sure you understand them. One of them is not everybody can have an HSA, okay? So you have to make sure that your health plan is a high deductible health plan. So what does that mean? Well, your annual minimum deductible for a self-only individual has to be $1,500 or more. For a family, that's $3,000 or more annually. And then also you got to make sure that your annual max out of pocket isn't too steep either. So the max for a self-only covered person is $7,500 annually, and then for a family that's $15,000 annually. So if your health plan falls into those limits, then and only then can you contribute to an HSA account. But you can't just contribute as much money as you want to it. There are limits to that as well. And for a single um, covered person for 2023, that max contribution is $3,850 for 2023. And then for a family, that's $7,750 for 2023. So that's the most that you can put into those health savings accounts on an annual basis. Now, there's one little catch to that as well, which is pretty neat, is that if you're age 55 or older, you get what's called a catch-up contribution of $1,000 annually. So you can contribute a little bit more than a, another person if you're getting closer to retirement and you're past that, that magical age of 55. Um, so that's really neat. Now, we've got the money in the HSA account, you're, you're doing that, but what about when it comes time to take money out of the account? That's where you gotta be careful, okay? Because you can only use these HSA funds for qualified medical expenses, okay? So you wanna make sure that you understand what is not and what is an actual qualified medical expense. So that's why when you're thinking about, hey, do I have the ability to contribute to an HSA? Can I even have one? And what does that look like when I take money out? Make sure that you're speaking with somebody. Maybe it's your, your accountant or your financial advisor, get with them so you understand all the little intricacies with that HSA account. It's a very valuable and powerful retirement planning tool, and it's something that if you have available to you, I highly suggest you look into it.